Yeah. I mean, I honestly think this, like the SP 500 from where we are right now could fall another potential 37% roughly. I mean, that, that is from a current big levels decline. from here, from the, from the current levels. So we'd be down like 40 and change. Uh, that is enough that creates a lot of, a lot of damage, a lot of stress, um, lots of bankruptcies, you, you name it. I mean, that, that is going to be another standout event that resets the financial markets like we saw from you know the 2000 uh, market top and uh, the 2008 so there's a lot of potential downside and, and people just need to be aware that this is this is a very delicate situation and people the problem is the most people turn a blind eye to the market when it goes down like this 20% is literally just the topping phase and then when it breaks down is when these these big sell offs go margin calls take place so, yeah. The founder and chief investment officer of the Technical Traders, Chris Vermeulen, talks about the latest market trends, the anatomy of a normal market, and his forecasts for different assets. Also, he will offer his whole opinions on trading, including what kinds of mistakes people are doing that lead to difficulties in trading and how those difficulties can be addressed. Self proclaimed Bitcoin, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and web marketing guru, Richard Hart. This time around, he'll be discussing Bitcoin's usefulness, Ethereum's risks, the trepidation around Binance, the regulations surrounding stablecoins, and the fundamentals of NFT. By the way, if you're interested in learning about DeFi and discovering innovative projects, you may want to check out our Master in DeFi course. It's designed to help you understand DeFi in a fun and easy way, with lessons that you can access immediately. Right now, we're offering a special launch discount of 90% off. This course will also give you the skills you need to make the most of Pulse Chain when it's released. If you'd like to learn more, just click on the link in the description and become a true cryptopreneur. Now, without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. According to Chris Vermeulen, the phase of the cycle that we are in right now is really hard to understand. So there's a lot that comes in, but the, the basic really high level that Stan Weinstein uses that I've used for years is simply this, this dotted line. Now, this is, this is just a, an infographic, uh, but more or less, it's the 150-day moving average. A lot of people use the 200, which I find is, is way too delayed. I mean, you're looking at a full year delay. The way he looks at it, and same with me, is if the 150-day moving average is sloping up and price is clearly holding above it, then you're more or less in a stage two. When it's when price is below the 150-day and the, the moving average is still moving up or it's flatlining and price is chopping around it when it's giving mixed signals, you're probably in a consolidation phase or a stage three, which is where we are now. And then when price is defined, like definitively below it and the moving average is sloping down, you're in a stage four. So that's a really high level, just quick observation of where we are in, in those potential cycles. Uh, and then you can look at those other cycles of which sectors are performing very well. And we've seen things rotate through those various sectors and with precious metals and energy leading the way and PE ratios being very high and the growth stocks um, clearly leading the way to the downside, it definitely is showing that there's not a lot of support in this market. And um, it's really, it feels like it's just, I hate to say it, but it's like a sucker's rally. Um, it's just this false bounce, this false bottom. And when the bottom falls out, man, it, it could get really, really ugly uh, across the board. So that's why if there's any time that somebody should focus on risk and position management, it's this phase. People right now are going to get hurt the most if they step into the market because literally a month or two from now, we could be breaking down. We could be in free fall mode. And the scenario that's set up, as you and I have talked about this uh, a month or two ago, is, is very similar to the 2000, 2001 market top. It's a, a major reset. And the stock market might not just correct for a year. It could trade lower or sideways for multiple years, like the 2000 correction I mean, the right. SP 500 took 12 years to recover after that. Uh, it's not it's not a something that anyone who's you know 45 plus wants to endure lose 12 years potential. So I, I guess if you're in, how does Chris Vermeulen make money in the stock market? Well, I like to look at the stock market as as the ocean. And so here, if we take a look at my charts, 
Uh, the top chart here is my investing strategy. This is the weekly chart. And I like to look at it as the ocean because there's, as we know, there's a tide that goes up and down. And so this long-term investing chart, which we've got the COVID crash on the left, um, you, you can understand or see when the market is in a bull market phase. When, we're, when it's going up, we've got green bars and it's above the key moving averages and we're in a bullish phase. The tide is going up. Naturally, you want to be long stocks. When things roll over and you get a sell signal, which happened uh, back in last April, the market has been going down in sideways and the tide is going out. You, all boats go down, almost all boats go down when the tide is going out. And so we don't, and we haven't been, and we don't wanna really be long stocks. If we are, it's for a very short period of time. So understanding these, these big phases, in a bullish phase, you wanna be in, in a bearish phase, you wanna be out. Um, when we break it down to a shorter term time frame to answer your question of when do we get in and out, as an investor, you can use these type of investing signals. But if we drop down to a shorter term trader, this is my uh, CGS strategy, which is uh, the consistent growth strategy, trading the SP500. We can get long when we've got buy signals, you get these beautiful long trends. When things are showing uncertainty, it goes to cash, it goes red, and then you get long, you get these nice long consistent trades and it uses a lot of different things it uses volume flow what different asset classes are doing cycles um, just technical analysis in general as well and so that's what i use to get in and out and we see these red sections because the technicals are saying the market's not favorable it could sell off and continue to go lower so we much rather step aside let it shake the market up and then when we get a new buy signal we move back in and so that's what i use and you'll notice here, once you're in a bearish phase, the stock market on average is actually going down more than it's going up. A perfect example of this is uh, if we take a look at the, the NASDAQ. You know, this in the past year, we've seen most of the time is red, it's in a downtrend, and we have these very short lived rallies. And so these are kind of like the waves I try to focus on. I, I like to look at it like the ocean. If you're a surfer, which I am, you're, you're waiting for those sets of waves to come in every you know, four or five minutes. And so these are those ocean wave sets that we're trying to trade. You can get long, you know when to take partial profits, where to move your stop. And then once the, the wave passes or goes by here, you can play inverse ETFs to the downside. You can rinse and repeat. So these are the type of moves we're focusing on and, and it goes back into uh, different time frames. You can play these waves and manage your positions. It's the same with the SP 500. Um, you can play all these waves in the SP 500 as well. So that's how I kind of manage these positions is look at the waves. And I try not to get too into the noise and chatter, like the daily back and forth, because that's where people get sucked into the volatility uh, and things like that. So it really comes down to being able to have profit targets and have rules and your rules are what's going to help you avoid holding on to positions. As you said, you know, you have all these paper gains and then everything crashes and you're still holding on to them. And now you're, you're underwater and you have to sell a position to lock in gains. And uh, that's, that's what I do is it's, I, we, we focus on reducing our risk, which means scaling out of positions and then waiting for a new deal. Investment lessons from Chris Vermeulen's experience that you are not following, which is why you struggle. I'm trying to focus on uh, investors like 45 and plus because that fits in the category I'm in. Uh, people who are, I think the buy and hold strategy is very dangerous for anyone who's 45 or plus uh, simply because there's going to be huge potential swings, multi-year drawdowns. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I mean, I focus the strategy around what I need, but it also benefits anyone 45 plus. The other thing is when you talk about you knowing your personality. So I wrote a couple very detailed articles, even with the quizzes and things about the Myers-Briggs test. And I don't know if you know about that, but it tells you tells you your personality. And so I, I did this big article, it's on my blog and uh, telling subscribers like, here are the different personality types, do the test. And if you fall under these types of personalities, you know, you're more inclined to require a strategy or a system, like a, somebody who provides you signals. Some of you might actually just need automated trading because you just, your personality doesn't bode well for, for trading and investing. And then there's others where I'm considered like the scientist, um, very technical, very logical. I'm a, I'm, I like the numbers. I, I can control things. I'm a checklist freak. 
Um, so it, understanding your personality type is really, really important. And if you don't know your personality type, you should go figure it out because it, it really plays a big role in to figure out, you know, should you be managing money? Um, should you have most of it, you know, managed for you? Because the reality is, I think it's about 70% of the personality types uh, based on my analysis and, and the stats, you're not, you're not set. You're not good for investing and managing your own money without some, some help from either, you know, a newsletter, like what I do or an advisor, you need that, that helping hand. So personality is huge into if you're going to naturally be a good trader or you're going to struggle. Mm -hmm. I, I'll let you finish. Richard Hart share his recent opinion regarding the collapse of FDX, what he thinks about it. Opinion. I've been warning everybody to take your coins off of exchanges, off of lending platforms for years. I've been in this business since 2011, first quarter. When I got into Bitcoin, when I started mining Bitcoin, it was 50 cents. Yeah. When I bought it, it was $30. Immediately went down to two, of course. <laughs> um, but then, you know, you hold it. It goes up to 1200, down to 200, up to 20,000, down to 3000, up to 14, down to four, up to 70, down to 15, five so far. Yeah. So the volatility is the price you pay for the world's best performing asset. Now it's not yeah. the best performing anymore, but if you look back on a long enough time frame, right? Like if, if you were able to buy it when it was a penny, you were up 690 million percent right, a year right. and a half ago. But if you well, bought like, it five years ago, you're down money now. Exactly. So there's a difference yeah. between buying 10 years ago and five years ago. But I mean, the, to get a 3X in real estate, you had to wait 15 years. To get a 3X in the stock market, you had to wait 15 years. And to get a 3X in crypto, you just need to wait the right month. It just has to be the right month. Yeah, So for sure. I so think FTX, the, you know, go ahead. very simply, cryptocurrency was invented to get rid of counterparty risk to put you in charge of your money. So you never have to beg anyone for access to the network. You never have to beg anyone to spend it. You never have to beg anyone for your keys, for your coins. You, know, you don't have to send selfies. You don't have to send uh, you know, hostage uh, videos. Please, it's really me. Please give me my money. That's the opposite of why crypto was invented. And when you give your coins to someone else, they're not your coins anymore. You're now an unsecured creditor. Congrats, you'll go last after all the VCs get paid out of the bankruptcy. So, you know, I told everybody, not your keys, not your coins for years. I invented a product that specifically solves that problem where you mine your own yield by holding your own keys. It pays on average 39% APY per year, but really it's millions of percent depending on when you bought. Um, just crazy, right? You're like, how is it possible? Well, it's the same thing Bitcoin did. You know, my coin went up 10,000 fold. Bitcoin went up 69,000 fold. Richard Hart thinks Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to blow out at top soon. What do you want yeah, to use crypto it. for? Getting rich. That's it. That's all you care about. Okay. Well, how are you going to get rich? Price chart. Number has to go up. Okay. Here's the Bitcoin Ethereum pair. Now it's making right. a, a ascending triangle, like blow out top soon. Right. Because the token, it, <laughs> Ethereum has lower inflation than Bitcoin. All the stable coins are on Ethereum. All the NFTs are on Ethereum. Hex, the time, world's first blockchain time deposits on Ethereum. Pulse Chain, the world's largest free airdrop is a copy of Ethereum. Uh, what are your thoughts regarding these professionals advice? Tell us in the comments. We hope we were able to provide some value and helped you to move a step ahead in your crypto journey. Be sure to check out our crypto brand called Cryptopreneur and get yourself the highest quality crypto merch available right now on the market and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our content. Till next time, goodbye.